All right, Anna Hugh, would you like to demonstrate how rains along a ridge? Excellent job, Anna Hugh. This is the Augmented Reality Sandbox created by the Engineering Club at the Herbert Mercer Technical High School. This is one of the five projects that will be shown in today's episode of School Zone. Stay tuned after the break for more. School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone. School Zone. Welcome to another episode of School Zone. As you heard earlier, we're here at the Herbert Morrison Technical High School in St. James, where we're learning about a few projects by the Engineering Club. Uh, first up on the program is the AR Sandbox. And joining me is the geography teacher here, Mrs. King Hope, who will be telling us more about this. The AR Sandbox is actually a technological tool that casts or projects virtual reality onto sand. So it is actually a simulation of topographical features that you can actually manipulate as you move the sand. It is one of the most student-centered tools we have at Herbert Morrison. Students can actually interact and move the sand and at the same time they can learn and have fun. Before we get to the actual secret of how it operates, there are some things that I would like to show you in terms of how the tool is used. We usually have flat maps that we use, we call them ordnance survey maps. Those maps are two-dimensional and students have limitations where those maps are concerned. Where the AR sandbox is concerned, students can actually interact with the box and create the features that they would normally see on a two-dimensional map. That excites them and that also enhances and complements the um, geography as a learning tool. Really, it's, it's really simple. It's only three main pieces of equipment. An infrared camera that we call the eyes, a projector and a computer that compiles the information. So the camera judges the depth which sends that information back to the computer. The computer processes this and sends it back to the projector which shows you what you see here. And seeing as we use the computer, we can put different functions on. So different keys have different functions. For instance, the one key would introduce more liquid to the environment, while the six key would change the type of liquid. So we can change it from water to lava to green moss to snow, back to water. So Ms. Clark, here we have the Herbie go-kart. It was a project that was started a couple of years back by other students of the engineering club, but wasn't finished because of financial strains that they had. So I and others Finish the go-kart as best as possible, as you can see here. We have here the gas pedal, which accelerates the vehicle, the cart, when we apply pressure on the pedal. Then we have the brake pedal, which is used to apply friction to the wheels, which slows down the cart. Then we have the steering, which steers either left or right. Now around here, we have the engine. This is a Honda GX120 6.5 horsepower engine and this cart is a dead axle go-kart which means that it is run by only one wheel. Over here we have the remote kill switch which I programmed myself um, which is used to turn off or turn on the cart from a remote distance. The kill switch is also is more like a safety device as there is Speaking about safety, here you can see we have our helmet and safety always comes first. And I like to add that the main purpose of this go-kart is to help persons of the Herbert Morrison Technical High School to learn how to drive so that when they leave high school they can have their driver's license. Mr. Cook? Hi, Thank you for having me. All right, so we're now at the buzzer system. And Mr. Koch, the president of the engineering club and teacher here, will be telling us more about this. This buzzer circuit here is um, no necessarily special buzzer bur circuit, um, but it has um, an additional feature. It has a referee here, basically, which basically indicates who buzzed first. 
So if Team Red buzz first, that signal is sent to this circuit board, which turns on the red light. When the red light is turned on, it prevents the blue light to turn on, whether or not the blue team is pressing. So, Ms. Clark, we're going to give you a practical demonstration of how these circuit boards work. Awesome. Team Blue, ready? Yes, sir. Team Red, ready? Yes, sir. Listen for me carefully. What is the capital of St. James? Montego Obviously, Bay. Team Blue is up first. Team Blue? Yes, sir. Montego Bay. Montego Bay, York, and Montego Bay is correct. So we decided that we wanted to, to make a board and make a board that is futuristic, an upgrade from what we had before. We also made it on the next basis. As a teacher, I wanted to have students to do activities, creative activities, because there are times when the activities is boring in, in their view. So I wanted students to get a feel of what it's like to be on school challenge quiz in my class without being on school challenge quiz. Have you ever heard about 3D printing, sublimation printing, and laser engraving? If not, today is your lucky day. We have examples of all three that were produced by the Engineering Club, and we'll be joined by Conrad, who will be showing us examples of these. Over to you, Conrad. Okay, thank you. Um, so here, here we have different products and items that were created in the laser engraver. So we have different keychains and necklaces, even little award plaques. These were all done in the laser engraver, which, as its name suggests, uses a laser to chip away at the materials put in, which is usually acrylic or solitex. Here we have medals that were given out at Sports Day. These were put into the heat press, which is a sublimation machine, and it basically transfers the gas to a solid, which is displayed in the center. Here we have one of my favorite things, the edge light lamp. Now these edge light lamps are both are two parts. So the main part is the acrylic and the second part is the base. Now the acrylic is done in the laser engraver like all our acrylic pieces and the bases. Some of them are pre-owned, some of them were purchased while some of them were created by our wonderful 3D printer. Now this 3D printer can do a marvel of things. It can create little keychains and trinkets, it can create full-blown machine parts, and it can even create functioning toys, toy vehicles. What it does is it melts a small wire of filament and through a little spout, takes its time and works its way up printing from, from bottom to top. I'd like to add that these pins and keychains and trinkets that we make we don't just keep them for ourselves, obviously. We sell, we sell them to the school at a discounted cost and we sell them to other schools and institutions at lower costs. Thanks again, Conrad. So we only have one more interesting project for you and that's the virtual tour of the Herbert Morrison Technical High School. And our friend here, Anthony, will be taking you through that tour. Today we are showing an interactive simulation of the school. It incorporates different things from different members of the engineering club. Today we have Kobe Jordan, he's our 3D modeler, he designs our characters. What he has here is the principal he's working on, the principal of our school, uh, Mr. Adams. All right, we also have Marcus Cohen, he works on the full model of the school, all the details of the school. He went out and got pictures and measurements of the entire school and then recreated it in a 3D software. Then we have Kevin Lee, our texture. He takes the models and applies realistic looking materials to them to make it look as realistic as possible, having all the scratches and dents of the school. And I do the programming. It allows for the character movements. As you can see, you can walk around the 3D space as much as you want. You see the AI, like different students in the school walking around going about their daily lives. The code allows them to inter move, around, move around the 3D space after I get the models from KJ, our vice president and 3D modeler, you can see the school is to scale. As you can see, when you stand up, you are to scale to the school. So are the characters in the simulation. Here is the document center for school. Down there, the area that we are looking is the visual arts area, and over there is the TD rooms. So you can see it's a fairly accurate model of the school. 
Boy, it's so sad that we have to close the program for today, but I know you will all agree with me that we had a fulsome time here at Herbert Morrison Technical High School. But just before we close the program, we have a quick question we want to ask the president and founder of the three-year engineering club. Why all of this? I've never seen anything like this. They are cut above the rest. Why? As a teacher of electrical technology, I have seen a lot of talent in my years of teaching. I just think that it is my duty to help bring forth that talent. Thank you so much, Mr. Cook, and all the best. I, I have great expectations for the club. And that's it. To have your school featured in School Zone, simply email me at sclark at gis.gov.jm. I'm looking forward to seeing your email. Until then, take care. School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone, School Zone.